So here we have the remnants of Hurricane Ida. We haven't had a good rain in probably over two weeks. So I've been waiting for this rain all day. And this is the first that I've seen that we've had. So ugh, still looking ugly guys, still looking ugly, but I'm anxious to see will this rain cause any of it to green up and bounce back at all, meaning that it was just lack of rain. You know, I've set the sprinkler out a few times um, so I'm curious to see, but I don't think that's the issue. We'll talk about that briefly and uh, talk about the choice. Let's do it. What's up, YouTube? It's Mr. Ferguson here. Thank you guys for coming back to my very sad lawn. I really hate it. <laughs> I hate even looking at it. In the in the camera you got look you got some stripes here and then you got brown it's so so uh we're not going to talk about this the whole time um i'm over it you know like everybody said we, we've got the aerating and seating coming up we're not going to sit here and i'm not going to whine about the lawn but i will say this is the only thing that i want to talk about here in the very beginning about what i'm seeing in my lawn and if you're new you can see it looks oh that looks pretty decent and then over here we just got straight up just I mean, it's just like melting away. Once again, this is what I encountered last year. Spoke too soon. Uh, it's been prevented. It's been later. Um, last time this began, it began in July and it's late August, uh, now into September that this is beginning like a, a switch flip. So a couple things that I just want to say quickly on this behind me. And I know, welcome to the channel, subscribe, all that good stuff. The, the only thing is I've done a little research and I want to show you a, a picture here. I'm going to move the camera over right here. I saw this post on Facebook. I am a part of the Lawn Care Nuts group on Facebook. And this guy, I believe his name is Mark because I'm not looking at the picture. You are. Um, he posted this and man, that looks exactly like what I'm seeing behind me here. And so could it be sod webworm? Could it be army worms? Man, it sure looks like it, but I will tell you guys, and, and I can flip the camera around at some point, um, but over here, I actually dug, I got my shovel out and dug a, a hole right here and looked all around the dirt. I didn't see anything. I found three earthworms and that was it. Nothing else was moving. I didn't find Jack Diddley. Um, so I will maybe dig in other areas, but um, yeah, I'm thinking maybe it could be insect. It could be fungus. So uh, those are the things that I'm just trying to research. You know, I'm going into year three of, quote, trying to have a great looking lawn. Uh, this is all experimental, um, as I've said from the very beginning of this channel. So it's another lesson I'm trying to learn, but I really want to find out. And I think one of the things that I know I put down in July was insecticide, um, but they say that wear off quickly. Somebody in comments said propiconazole only lasts 14 days. I'll have to read the label to see if that is true, but I just put down propiconazole last month as well. And so it's just like, boom, a trigger flipped and the fading just happened. So could it be that we haven't had a good rain in two weeks? Possibly. Could it be potassium? Possibly. Could it be insecticide and insects? Possibly. Could it be fungus? Possibly. I don't know. So when I figure out, I'll be sure and tell you guys, hey, it's raining a little bit. So I got hit up this weekend on Sunday by my cousin and he was asking me questions because he's going to try to have a nice looking lawn, plant some things, over, over aerate, overseed, those type things. And uh, the thing that caught me off guard was he said, well, I plan on putting down probediamine when I do my seed. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. And it brought back to my memory that we haven't talked about this and uh, about pre-emergent versus overseeding. And so I wanna talk about that with those that maybe this is the first year, they're gearing up, they're getting fertilizer, they're getting seed, they're gonna aerate, and, uh, and, and they're maybe thinking the same thing my cousin was. So um, I wanna talk about the choice. So as cool season lawn care people, we have a choice. If your lawn is thick from last year, and it's looking good, it's looking great, you have the option to not overseed. If you think it looks well enough to where you don't feel that you need to throw down any seed, um, you can choose to not overseed. And therefore you have the ability, since you're not overseeding, you have the ability to throw down a pre-emergent. Mr. Ferguson, why would I wanna throw down a pre-emergent? I'm glad you asked. And the answer is because we have this annoying um, cool season weed called Poa annua that is one of the reasons I began starting this channel also. Poa annua comes up when 
our soil temperatures begin to drop, poa annua begins to germinate in our lawn. Um, and so if you're not going to overseed, you can then have the ability to put down prodiamine in your lawn in the fall. And this pre-emergent, what prodiamine does, puts a barrier on top of our soil. And when that poa annua tries to germinate, it will block it. And so therefore, during the, the fall and throughout the winter, when all the poa starts to try to germinate, it's unable to do so because there's a barrier prodiamine. Now, that being said, let's go to the opposite choice, which is choice number two. Let's say your lawn looks like crap, like mine. Um, clearly, I'm going to have to throw down seed, which I fully believe about 99% of us, that is going to be the case. We're going to throw down overseed. We're going to throw down seed in our bare areas. Now, why would I tell my cousin you can't do prodiamine when you throw down the seed? And if you've not put two and two together yet from what I just told you, it's because when we do that prodiamine, it puts that barrier and we're sitting there trying to germinate seed. There's conflict there. Those roots are not going to are going to get burned by that pre-emergence. So we can't do both at the same time. It's a choice for those of us that is going to be throwing down seed. We throw down the seed and then we wait. We wait till our seed germinates. That's why we put down peat moss. That's why we have to water it. That's why we are aerating. That's why we're putting down starter fur. We're getting our germination going for our new seed. Later on in the beginning, early, um, as early as I believe February when I did it last time, then we're gonna throw down pre-emergent. We don't wanna put down that pre-emergent too early because it can stop our seed from growing. So there you see the choice. Uh, I tried it, um, last year was my test. I was gonna try to germinate my seed and immediately get down prodiamine to try to stop POA. I was unsuccessful. I don't even think it really, excuse me, helped at all. Um, I, I put it down, I think in December. The, the first year I put down prodiamine in, in February and I was way too late. I put it down, I believe in December last year and I still had POA. So what I will tell you is in my personal opinion after two seasons of growing GCI turf type tall fescue and cool blue that the best thing that I can tell you is having a thick lawn is the best way to naturally prohibit POA from coming up all over your lawn. Now if you're able to not overseed because you feel that you're, you're good remember fescue is not a grass that uh, spreads. If you got Kentucky bluegrass, it is a slow spreader. Um, so you don't necessarily have to throw down if you have a full Kentucky blue yard. But if you have fescue, you do want to overseed because it doesn't germinate fescue on its own. We have to plant it. And so that's where you have to make that decision and that choice. So that's where we kind of are as far as the choice. And um, uh, let me know in the comments what you guys are thinking about. I think about 99% of the people that are on this channel and Ryan Knorr and Lawn Care Nut and GCI Turf and all that, that most of us are having issues like this. You, you commented on my last video. Yeah, I'm seeing similar things from brutal heat, lack of rain from insects, fungus. And so most of us are overseeding. And then later in early spring, we will then do pre-emergent to stop any weeds in the spring. Um, but let me know if you're one of those rare people that said, man, I've done well, my lawn has survived, it looks good. I think this year for the first time, I'm gonna try to go pre-emergent and not overseed. Let me know in the comments below. Um, I hope to some point get there. As I've mentioned in the last video, I spoke way too soon because I thought, man, I'm gonna survive the summer with a lawn and this stuff has just hit me out of the blue. So. Here we are, it'll be okay. So let me know your thoughts down below. Um, I'm curious to hear what you guys are gonna be doing. So that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. Again, we're getting so much closer to the end of September where I will be doing my, my big overseeding, my big aerating with Mr. Kevin across the street. Um, September 24th is that date, so you can look for that video somewhere close to or after September 24th. And it'll be the big day 2021, you know, throwing down GCI, turf type tall fescue or something of that nature. So I'm anxious, obviously, with the, with the yard looking as disgusting as it does now um, I'm looking even more to um, to to that date I did do a mow because it was areas where like here and this is what throws me here in the shade we got some areas where it still looks decent but over here in the Sun and in different areas it looks thin I don't know I'm not gonna bug myself thinking about it um, one of the things I did go back and look at my old soil test and in June, my pH level was around five. A neighbor messaged me, he thinks his pH was low. And so that could have been what happened with his yard. His did this kind of sooner than mine. 
So I went back and looked at my pH and it was slightly below optimal. So I may need to do a lime treatment here for pH purposes. So it, it's probably something I will definitely do between now and aerating or the, at least the day of seeding. Check your pH, make sure your pH is in that seven range. So anyways, thank you guys for watching the video. I appreciate it. Content should begin to roll and pump up and we should be uh, doing better things here soon. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, again, comment below what your thoughts are, what your choice is gonna be. And uh, God bless you guys. We'll see you on the next video.